seeing me right now through that monitor in front of you? The answer is yes or no, and if you can't choose, you can't perceive me. You don't know whether I'm here or not. One or zero, yes or no. Binary logic is something you depend on. Without it, you can't have so much as a single perception. If we can base insight to God, on binary logic, we got it made. We don't need faith anymore. It's extraneous, irrelevant. I am closer to absolute truth than any man has been before me. Do I think that makes me better than everybody else? No. I still work in a bar. I don't think we should live in a violent world. I think that everybody should be wonderful and kind to each other. But let's face facts, shall we? Very few people are kind to each other. It's not the kind of world we live in yet. If I have anything to say about it, it will be the kind of world we live in someday. This is a feeding frenzy we're in here. Everybody is trying to wring as much out of this planet as they possibly can. Pollution, overpopulation, militarism on the parts of foreign governments, poverty problems. We've got a lot of people starving to death. Diseases out there on the horizon that need to be cured. Forms of pollution that we couldn't even have imagined a century ago, including radioactive waste. The sea is becoming a desert. We're running out of farmland. We're losing the ozone layer. Polar ice caps are melting. We have a lot of problems now. How do we do what's right? How do we fulfill our destiny here on planet Earth and beyond? Colleges and universities purport to be harnessing intelligence for the good of mankind. They're a breeding house for parrots. People are allowed to make little tentative moves forward, but they're not really allowed to do anything too radical. What does academia claim to have a solution to the ills of the world? As soon as you announce that you have a little bit of money to spend, virtually every hand, and there will be a lot of hands that reach out for that money, will belong to a professional academic. They're hogging all the resources that should go to solving these problems. We need an alternative to academia. And the alternative to academia is the ultra-high IQ community. Smart people are vastly outnumbered by average people. It's the nature of the bell curve. <laughs> so in any kind of democratic society, average people are going to end up calling the shots at the very top of our economic and socio-political structure are dunces. El stupido. People who don't have a clue. When you turn a bunch of dunces loose, this is what tends to happen. Duncical equilibrium. Mediocrity has triumphed. Everywhere you look, you see signs of mediocrity. The stupid person thinks that he's as smart or smarter than the smart person. And therein lies his stupidity. A lot of them call themselves CEOs. To succeed, you have to learn how to kiss up kiss your way up the ladder of success. How do you change that balance of power? I think it has to be changed at the individual level. We have to reshape the image of what it means to be a human being. We have to create a new kind of person. 
You can't run a democracy with a citizenry that really doesn't know how to make valid decisions. Most people don't even know what decision theory is. They don't know what maximization of utility is. We live in a highly complex technological world, and it's not entirely obvious what's right and what's wrong in any given situation unless you can parse the situation, deconstruct it. People just don't have the insight to be able to do that very effectively. We have to have an educated and intelligent citizenry, which I regret to say we don't necessarily have at the present time. Say you had the opportunity to run the world. How would you do it? Oh, well, one of the first things that I would do is I would institute something like the Manhattan Project for a safe, long-lasting means of birth control. Simply implant that in all children at age 10. That would solve our population problem right off the bat. It would also enable us to practice a benign form of eugenics, or I should probably say anti-dysgenics. Prevent undesirable genetic mutations in the human genome. People who wanted to have children would apply to make sure they had no diseases. Either we have to do it through genetic engineering, or we have to let only the fit breed. We like to think that it is our right to breed as incontinently as we want to, to have as many kids with whomever we want to. Future generations of mankind are being saddled with the results of what we do. Or don't do. Freedom is not necessarily a right. It is a privilege that you have to earn. A lot of people abuse their freedom, and that is something that people have to be trained not to do. But who? Who does this training? Well, I'd be perfectly willing to do it myself. Just put me in charge. We have to have a philosophical framework, an actual ethical structure that we can look at and say, well, this is, without a doubt, the right way of thinking. Within that framework, we derive an advanced ethics, an ethic that can be taught without fear in elementary school, grade school, secondary school, and in our colleges and universities. We have to start looking for possible alternative sources of leadership. I don't see anybody on the top of the heap now who is capable of doing this. They've all been co-opted by the system. They have too much to lose by deviating from what is now a barren path. It's going to take somebody else, so somebody coming in from outside, somebody uh, rising to the top from the bottom, shall we say. Could it be you? Who knows? It could be you. But could you provide such a framework? Yes, I could. I've already done so. Cognitive theoretic model of the universe the CTMU. It shows that we're all a part of the same universal self. All men are related in ways they can't necessarily discern on this plane of reality. We're all the same. We all share a basic fundamental identity with each other, which means that we should all be trying to help each other and cooperate with each other to make this a better place to live. As it is now, everybody's trying to run his own show here. We can't have that. But everyone would have to agree. Well, it's kind of hard to disagree with the premise that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Isn't it? We have to establish a fundamental basis for agreement. Otherwise, we're going to end up using up what we have and killing each other over the remains. Humanity is going to perish. Faith is dead. People no longer have faith in anything. So we're going to have to make logic do where faith once stood. A world of pure mind? Yes, we can call the universe, for want of a better term, the mind of God. God is the principle of consistency, the principle of cohesion that holds the universe together. We're all little pieces of God. We're all one. In such a world, the ultra high Q, what role do they play? They are no better 
and no worse than anybody else, but they do have more responsibility by virtue of their greater ability. Problems that they can solve that can't be solved by other people, it naturally falls upon them to solve those problems. That's what high intelligence does for you. It enables you to hold many different things in your mind simultaneously and all their interrelationships. I would hope to hold the whole universe in my mind. That's the dream of a lot of people. A lot of physicists, a lot of cosmologists, a lot of theologians and philosophers. And me. What would that feel like to hold the whole world in your mind? It would feel pretty good. Wouldn't holding the whole world in your mind make you God? As I think I explained, every human being is an endomorphic image of the mind of God. So yes, not with the power of God, not with the extent of God, I would still have to be humble in sight of God, but I would have a certain theic identity. I would share an ultimate essence with God himself. These vessels of meat, these prisons of flesh, they have windows. We can get a view to the levels above by looking through the window of mind, the window of intellect. One day we'll all be able to take a good long look through that window. The high IQ community can be a valuable step in the evolution of mankind by providing reportage that that window exists and of what can be glimpsed through the window. Is this a priesthood of intellect? An elite who have the ability to partake of those higher levels. Yes, I'd say that there's uh, probably an element of priesthood to it. A church? Not based on faith church that's based on logic and mathematics, a basis for cooperation that cannot be destroyed by religious quibbling, by theological differences. Have you ever met someone smarter than yourself? As near as I can tell, no. And if somebody walked up right now and claimed to be smarter than me, I'd put him through his paces. I'd try to find out how sophisticated a picture of reality he'd evolved. Try to see what he was holding in his mind simultaneously and what he could do. I wouldn't give him necessarily an IQ test. I'd look at his productions. Am I capable of understanding his productions? Is he capable of understanding mine? If the answer to that were in his favor, then I'd have to say he's more intelligent than I am. But that wouldn't necessarily stop me from doing what I have to do. Is he out there? I doubt it. Could be. I don't rule it out. I'm not in complete control of reality. There could be somebody a lot smarter than I am out there. There could be an entire planet full of beings, every single one of which is a lot smarter than I am. I can't say. But I do know that in my life I have not encountered many people with the depth of understanding that, uh, that I have regarding certain things. In particular, the overall nature of the reality we inhabit. Do I think that makes me better than everybody else? No. I still work in a bar. How good could I possibly think I am? 